Praise God. Yeah, you guys can sit down. So once again, I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much to our uh, music team right here. That's a good time of worship. Worshiping the Lord. My name, by the way, is your Kuyo Ronald. Uh, especially for those of you guys who are here for the first time. So if you're here for, if you are our guest, you're here for the first time. Once again, welcome to Elevate uh, Baguio. We are hoping that you guys will really have a good time with us uh, this afternoon. And, you know, uh, especially if you're a first time, actually even those who are who have been with us for the longest time, you, are, you came in at the right time in the right place, of course, because we are starting a brand new series here with us at Elevate. And it's called G, okay? So, familiar naman kasi G, di ba? Ayan. Siyempre, alam din namin yan. Kahit matanda kami, alam namin. <laughs> G, di ba? Sama ka. So, this is gonna be an invitation. This is going to be a journey, all right? So, for all of us, okay? So, uh... Kayo ba, gusto nyo bang ano, kapag nagbibiyahe, gusto nyo may kasama, di ba? You like to journey with someone, right? Oh, yan. Di ba, gusto nyo may ka-journey uh, sa buhay nyo, di ba? Gusto nyo yun. Actually, gusto nyo yun. Sure ako dyan. Gusto nyo may ka-journey for in order for you to grow. Gusto nyo may ka-journey sa love life ninyo. Yung iba sa inyo, yun lang ina sa isip. <laughs> gusto nyo may ka-journey in order for you to improve, in order for you to uh, uh, to mature, right? So it's always nice to be to, to be in a journey with someone, right? So in terms especially how we live our uh, lives. And you know, our aim here at Elevate is to actually empower you, at, to actually move you up to the next level. Okay, yun yung goal actually ni Elevate. No? What, what does level mean? That means that we would like to level you up in terms of your values, in terms of your uh, leadership, in, uh, in terms of your excellence, and in terms of your uh, leadership. So, values, excellence, and leadership. Gusto namin kayong maka-journey and you would level up, okay? In terms of that one. That is why, before we go on, and that, by the way, that is why we have this series, okay? This is, by the way, a going to be a journey series. This is going to be a discipleship uh, series. And uh, I would like to tell you now that there's going to be a campaign that we will do. It's going to be called Be One in One. So, if I just read the Tagline right there, that is to bring one student to this journey in one year. Because here, we really believe that you will only grow, especially in terms of the small groups. And if you would like to grow in terms of your values, in terms of your excellence, in terms of your leadership, in terms of your relationship with the Lord, this is how we think you will grow. Through, uh, you will first engage with the person, explore, then we will teach you how to grow in terms of your faith, and then we will teach you also how to serve. Maybe you, you, you would like to serve in the ministry that you see here right now, and then of course, Later on, you might want to also lead a small group of your own. So we will launch this. I'm just mentioning this to you now, but your small group leaders will be the one to explain this to you in your small groups of how this is going to be. Okay, but the official launch for this one is actually next, next week. It's going to be on April uh, 1. All right, so if you're uh, very much interested on what this is, please do stand by for announcements in our Facebook page, uh, Elevate Baguio. But this is about journeying, and that is why we are doing this series na G Samaka. And speaking of journeying, by the way, our title for week one is called The Invitation of a Lifetime. And speaking of invitation, isn't it true, kapag invited kayo somewhere to a certain event or something like that, it's it almost kind of feels like always na para bang when you when you get invited para sang honor di ba parang oh wow na nakita niya ako I, I got invited right parang parang you feel like you are special di ba pag when when you get to be uh, invited that you are noticed right tama ba o hindi niyo feel na special kapag invited kayo kasi feeling niyo lagi kayong automatic na ini-invite <laughs> pero ako di ba parang kunan na invite ako somewhere sa isang kasal di ba or or a birthday party it, it kind of feels like, no, I, I'm honored that I was thought of to be invited, right, in that particular uh, event. That is why it also stings when you don't get invited, right? Kahit ninyo aminin, yes, it stings, right? Now, for example, di ba may kaibigan ka who had a birthday party, tapos nag-post sila sa IG at saka sa Facebook, hindi ka kasama. Di ba? Ang sakit nun. Sobra. Right? Kaya sabi ko, kasi sabi ko sa inyo na when, when you get invited, it's actually, you know, it feels good, right? It feels good. But when you don't get invited, it actually kind of uh, stings. And you know what? The story 
from the first century, of course, this happened to Jesus and a particular person, a particular woman. That is the story uh, that we are going to be taking a look at this uh, afternoon. It's about a, a woman. It's about someone who, ha- who, who we can consider as a socially outcast. I mean, parang there's nothing in her that she will be invited to parties. Okay? So parang medyo, uh, for some of you can actually lead to that, right? Parang social outcast siya, na there is nothing in her, there, it, by social standards, she will never be invited in events. And that's the story na titigin natin a little bit uh, later on. And you know what? Because she got this particular one invitation that actually changed her life. She, she never gets invited, but she just got this one invitation, and this one invitation actually changed her life. And the thing is, you know what? That invitation, it's the same invitation that God is going to give you today. So, gusto niyo bang malaman ko ng invitation na yun? Okay, later on. Sasabihin natin ko ng invitation na yun. Okay, before that, okay? Before we go to that story, let me just ask you first. When you were younger, did you guys have ideas na when you grow up, nalaman yung hindi pala siya totoo. Yung parang, you, you, be, you really, as a child, you really believe in this, but when you get, get to be in high school or maybe elementary or something like that, basta medyo lumaki ka na, nalaman mo, ay, hindi pala totoo to. Meron ba kayong ganun? Yung parang you believe na parang, my childhood was a lie. Alam mo yung parang ganun? <laughs> something like that. O, sige, let me give you an example. Actually, narinig ko na si Mayan eh. Like for example here, oh, that Santa rewards you with gifts to, uh, if you stay good and behave enough. Until you caught your mom wrapping your gift. For some of you, you actually believe this. Yung anak ko, actually, she, he believed this until bago siya mag-high school. Imagine, matanda na siya. You know what? Paano niya nalaman na hindi totoo si Santa? <laughs> Uy, baka sa iba sa inyo naniniwala pa. Ay, hindi ba totoo? Sabi niyo, baka iyak kayo mamaya later on. <laughs> okay, sige. <laughs> Para niya nalaman na hindi totoo kasi we always have this mystery gift okay that appears somewhere in our house that's of course that's for him and he actually thought that's kasalanan namin yon okay <laughs> hindi pa kami christian during that time so he actually believed in my santa so there's this mystery gift na every year and every year so he believes na merong santa but during that year nakalimutan naming magbalot okay so anong ginawa namin so nagbubili na lang kami somewhere okay Nung, nung gift na yon, tapos binalot na lang siya, binalot namin siya. Nung binuksan niya, nakita niya, sabi niya, Mama, pati pala si Santa nag-gift ng 7-Eleven, no? <laughs> Kasi nakalimutan namin tanggalin yung tag ng 7-Eleven. Okay? So from that point on, we have to tell him na, okay, hindi siya totoo. Alright? So, alright? So that's that's one example. How about this one? Oh, if you cross your eyes for long enough, they'll stay that way forever. Sinabihan na ba kayo niyan? Oh, sige, bahala kang mahanginan yan. Sige ba, nag, di ba nagdudulingduling kang ganun. Right? So, mahanginan yan, di na babalik. Okay? Some of you, you got scared with this one. How about this one? If you touch a toad or a frog, oh, you'll get warts, yung kulugo. So, I don't know if you believe this, right? So, actually, a scare tactics lang to ng parents para hindi ka magdumi. Right? <laughs> okay? So, how about this one? Okay. Oh, ito, maraming gumagawa hanggang ngayon, for sure. If you bump your head, Knock your chin so that you won't get stupid as you grow older. Diba? Parang, ay, nagaginoon, kailangan, diba? Para hindi ako mabobo. <laughs> o, i- yung iba sa inyo naniniwala pa dyan, okay? O, sige, about this one. Okay, may konti pa. If you swallow gum, it'll stay in your body for seven years, right? Because your mom doesn't like you to eat bubble gum, so your mom will tell you, sige, bahala ka. Magdidikit-dikit yung ano mo, diba? <laughs> right? Okay, about this one. O, last two, last two. When you bite your tongue... We, we are, you know what? Filipinos are the only people that kahit na hindi na sila makahinga, they will never ask for water, but they will ask for a number, number, number. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we do this, right? So instead na tubig ang hiningiin, di ba? You actually ask for a number, alright? Kasi nga, sabi nga din na, uh, the, the, first, you know, the first letter uh, is the person who actually remembers you. Okay, last na tayo, last na. Uh, if you talk about someone dying, knock on wood, Right? So it won't actually happen. Now these are the s- somehow crazy, hilarious, and s- sometimes outright stupid things, you know, that we actually uh, believe in, right? And and I'm only telling you this one because it actually sets up the context, okay, for what we are gonna dive into the story that we have here right now. Because during Jesus' time, and all of the pe- the religious leaders re- leaders uh, during his time, they also have this 
well, not as funny and as this one, because what they actually believe, they also have these crazy ideas, okay? They have these crazy ideas that is somehow they believe it, but it's not actually true, and it's becoming even more, uh, it's already becoming dangerous for people. Like, for example, they have this crazy idea about sickness. When you, when you have any kind of sickness, if you're, if you're a blind person or if you have this particular sickness, if you're lame, if you're deaf, you know what? They believe that if someone is sick, it's because that's a result of their sin. Or it's a result of the parent's sin. That's why that happened to you because someone else sinned. It's either you or your parents. And disclaimer, okay, before I go ahead with that particular thought, I'm not saying that sin doesn't have any consequence, okay? Sin has a consequence. But they take this particular idea to the extreme that they say, you know what, that's happening to you because God is cursing you. You know, you're, you, maybe you're doing something that is not right before God. You know, that's why these things are happening to you. There's death in the family because there's something, in your, there's something that you're doing or you're, you have... The, uh, your parents sinned before, so on and so forth. And another thing that somehow extreme, right, is, is this idea of appearances. Okay, it's this idea of appearances. Because for them, somehow, especially the religious leaders, somehow they think that God is more interested or God is more pleased when you have your act together. Like when your life is in place, okay? It, it was more about uh, it was more about the outside rather than what's happening in the inside. It was more about how you present yourself to people where God is most interested. It's something to do with you have to dress this way, you have to act this way, you have to do it religiously, ritually this way in order for God to be pleased with you. And that, those, those two, no? their, their idea about sin and sickness and their idea about appearances, it was so embedded in the culture that you know what's happening? It's dividing the people. It's dividing the people between what? And they're already starting to judge, really judge each, each other. Okay? Ito na yung mga cancel culture, you know, you know the cancel culture now? Mas grabe yung cancel culture nila before. Okay? Walang wala yung cancel culture that we have now. It's dividing the people and it's dividing these are the righteous, you know, the, the good people that God likes. And these are the people that do, are considered to be the sinners that God doesn't really like. But it's, it's really starting to divide the uh, people. And the dangerous thing that's happening since there is division between the, the, the righteous, the good people, and the sinful people. You know what? What people do, uh, does during their time, what, what people do during this time is to actually pretend. They're actually pushed to pretend. Because syempre, di ba, parang sinner, ayoko mapunta sa category na yon, Right? Gusto ko mapunta sa category ng good people, the righteous people. And if you're in the category of the righteous people, they cannot know that I'm struggling with a sin. They cannot know that I'm struggling with something. They cannot know that I made a mistake. They cannot know that I made a, a wrong decision. So what do I do? I pretend. So it's more of the appearances, right? It's more of the it's it's more of outside focus. And you know Jesus Jesus came to challenge that. Jesus came to challenge that. Jesus came to sometimes rebuke the religious leaders. No, he he would teach in parables, he would tell them stories, he he will preach, he will he will teach and then tell the people, you know what? You know, before God all you need to do is just be humble. You don't you don't have to pretend no? Before God, all you need to do is just be humble before God. You just have to be authentic. You have to be transparent before God. All you need to do is just be real with God. No, that, that, that's the idea of what Jesus was actually teaching them before. And you know what? This makes sense to us even right now. What Jesus is actually telling the people to be authentic, to be real before God, this actually makes sense for all of us right now. Because, hey, in human relationships, the relationships that we have either with your parents, with your friends, or with your siblings, isn't it true that it is difficult to actually connect with someone if they're not really presenting the real them? Diba? 
if they're, if they're not really being themselves, it's really very difficult to connect with that particular person because they're not being true, right? They're staying in the shadow. There are some things that they're really uh, holding back. It's, it's going to be difficult for them or for us, for you, to establish what I would like to call a real relationship. Diba? If, if, if you are pretending to a friend, if you're pretending to your mom, if you're pretending, if you're, if you're hiding in the shadows, it's going to be difficult for you to actually establish real relationships, right? Or real relationships. Because it is an impossibility to have a true connection between two people's imaginary self. Why? Because the relationship is not real. Because it's imagine, you are both imaginary, right? So if, if I'm presenting to you a version of myself, and if we have a relationship, that means that the relationship isn't real. Why? Because you are having a relationship with someone who, is not, who does not even exist. So much so, na pareho pa kayo nag, di ba, nagpe-pretend that you have your mask. That means that, I, that the imaginary people that we are presenting ourselves to be are the, actually the ones who are having a relationship. It's not really us. You don't have a real relationship, right? And again, di ba, you do this with a lot of our relationships. You did this with your mom, with your dad, with your friends, with your small group leaders, right? With, with your small group members, we do this a lot. And the dangerous thing about this is, you know what? Sometimes we do this also with God. We translate this kind of relationship or how we project ourselves, this imaginary self, we project this to God. As if we can hide anything from God. But we do it anyway, right? cover up We pretend before God as if, like I told you, we can actually hide anything from Him. What, you know what, what, what we do? We deceive ourselves, right? we lie to, our, to, to ourselves, we ignore the fact that we have a relationship with God, but actually no, we are just putting a facade. There is an imaginary self that, you know what God, this is what I would like to be, pero siya yung may relationship, it's not even the real me. Because the real me, there is something dark in here, and I'm very ashamed of it, that's why I'm hiding it in the shadow. Right? And that's ironic, you know, I really like the psalm, David says, the sacrifice, see here, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. This is David talking to God. And David is telling here, you know what? God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need your life to be in place. He doesn't need you to be perfect. He doesn't need you to be righteous. He doesn't need you to be holy. Because the sacrifice that God desires is what? Is your brokenness. Whoever you are, right? That's why I really like what we sang a while back, come as you are. You know? that's, that's, that's what God wants. You, because the thing is, you know, you will not reject a broken and repentant heart, oh God. All God wants is not your self-righteousness, how you think yourself as a good person. Okay? But all what God wants is your humility to accept and admit, you know, that you're not, not going to be perfect. That you are a broken person, right? All God wants is your authenticity. And again, di ba, comfort to, sobrang comfort to. I don't know with you, ah. Parang ako, I would really love to have a relationship with a God who is like this, right? Can you imagine if God's requirement in order for us to, to have a relationship with Him is perfection? Not, not even one of us will really have a relationship with God. But that's not what God requires from us. All what God wants is a what? A broken spirit, a repentant heart, someone who really admits that they're sinful. Right? That's what God wants. And basically, you know, that's going to be the invitation that's going to happen for this afternoon. And that's the same invitation that was given to this particular woman that we will take a look at today. You know, in Luke chapter 7, there's this, you know, in Luke chapter 7, during this time, Jesus was already gaining popularity among people. In our time, he really is an influencer. And literally, people follow him, not click follow. Okay, like, like literally, people follow him everywhere. There's thousands and multitudes of people who are following him physically. Okay? So, yung kilala mong influencer, walang wala kay Jesus and promise. Okay? 
So Jesus was gaining popularity during this time because people, a lot of people have heard him teach, okay? A lot of people have heard him, uh, heard and saw him perform miracles. That's why there's a lot of crowds that are gathering uh, around him. And he has gained not just the attention of the people, the normal people, the sinful people, but he has gained especially the attention of what? The religious people. Okay? Kasi yung mga religious people during this time, ayaw na ayaw nila ng mga ganito. Because during this time, Jesus was already claiming to be God, that He is the Messiah. And there's a lot of people who have claimed that, that they were able to prove na they were scammers, they were fraud. So another person claiming again, ah, this is gonna be fraud again, this is gonna be a scam ulit to. And so, Jesus got invited, okay, by a certain religious person, and the name is Simon. Okay? So Simon the Pharisee. When you say Pharisee, he is a religious lawyer. He's a religious leader. Okay? So Simon invited Jesus for dinner at his house, not because he liked Jesus. Okay? So he invited Jesus not because gustong gusto niya si Jesus. No. Because the thing is, actually he doesn't really like Jesus. He, would only, he only invited Jesus to his house because he would like to prove and catch and trap Jesus and eventually expose that he nga is indeed a fraud. Okay? That's, that's only his actually uh, purpose. And how do I know that he doesn't really like Jesus, although he invited Jesus? Because he forgo all of the, the, uh, the customary hospitality. Like before, the Jewish people, when they invited the guest, there are some things that they do to honor the guest. Like for example, is that they, uh, when the guests come in, either they kiss them on their cheek or on their hand. Simon does not do that to Jesus. Or another thing is, uh, you, you wash the feet of your guests before coming in the house. S- Simon also doesn't do that. Or if you take it to a higher level, you would like to bless them by anointing them with oil on their head. And Simon also doesn't do that. So that means that no, Simon doesn't really you know, uh, like Jesus. And still, he got uh, still Jesus you know, uh, went into Simon's house and, and ate dinner. And the thing, you know what? There's a scandalous thing that happened there. Okay? So what's that scandalous thing? Here's what happened. When a certain immoral woman, code word for prostitute, he was the, she was the town prostitute. When a certain prostitute from that city heard he was eating there, that's Jesus, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. So there's this woman who was not invited. So the gate crash siya, okay? So the gate crash siya dun sa party. And with her is an expensive perfume. You know what? When you calculate the amount of this, it's actually worth a year's salary. That's how expensive that perfume is. A year's salary. It's with her. And I will tell you why later on what's the significance of that. So what happened? So this woman, not invited, right? And by the way, she will never be invited to any. Because knowing who she is and what she does for work, she will never be invited. Imagine, huh? this is a religious gathering because it's a Pharisee. It's a religious person who invited Jesus, right? And then there's this immoral woman. There's this prostitute. They went on a gate crash. Can you imagine the awkwardness? No? Di ba parang grabe siguro yung reaction ng mga tao doon. So what happened after that? Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. There's so much crying that that woman does that her tears fell on his feet, on Jesus' feet. Ganong kadami yung iyak niya. Right? So her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. You know, the text doesn't really tell us why she was weeping. Why she was crying? Why, she, why was she crying? It doesn't tell us actually. But my guess is she might have heard Jesus in one of her 
preaching somewhere, in one of her teaching somewhere. And I'm guessing that this was uh, the day that she, uh, because uh, Jesus was in town. Of course, Jesus was teaching everywhere. She heard uh, the teachings of Jesus and then he, she got to know that Jesus is going to be here in his Pharisee. And what? From that teaching, she got really convicted with the teachings of Jesus. That's my best guess here. She got convicted. She was able maybe to relate to the teachings of Jesus. That's why that's her reaction. So what did she do? Right? She wiped them off with her hair. She kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Then take note of the reaction of the people. When the Pharisee who had invited him, that's Simon, right? Saw this, he said to himself, that means he did not say it out loud. He was just thinking about it. Okay? So get the idea there, uh, the context there. So he said to himself, if this man, if Jesus was really from God, if he's really a prophet, if he's really a religious person, like if he's really clean, if he's not a fraud, right? If he's really son of God, if he's really a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. So iniisip lang ni ano yan, iniisip lang ni Simon yan. That's, her, that's his judgment on this particular woman. So this woman, courageously, right? Uninvited, just went into the house, okay? And can you imagine yung awkwardness again? Di ba parang, you're the town prostitute, all of these are religious leaders, and I'm gonna walk in in the middle of everyone. So siguro na nagbubulungan sila, di ba yun yung ano, prostitute? Right, you, you get the idea, how awkward that scene might have been, right? There might have been a lot of whispers during uh, that time. But you know what? This particular woman, she doesn't care. Right? She did not care. She just walked right in. She was uninvited. She was focused and she was determined to go to Jesus. Right? Parang she disregarded that she, that she is the town prostitute, that she is a prostitute. Disregarded everything that she might hear from other people. She disregarded all of that because she was so focused to just, you know, ang, ang, ang goal ko lang is to actually go to Jesus at this time. And there's a lot of things, by the way, aside from her being a prostitute, there's a lot of things she did here that are actually plain scandalous. Plain scandalous yung mga ginawa niya dito. What are those things that she, she, she did that are scandalous? Number one, she let down her hair. Remember, she wiped Jesus' feet with her hair, right? So that means she has to uh, unbind it. During that time, that's scandalous. Now, that's do your way of flirting, right? <laughs> ganun, ganun tayo ngayon, di ba? That looks sexy, di ba? Parang for, for now. Parang, woo. During that time, no. You only do the unbinding of the hair and exposing of the hair if you're going to have an intimate moment with your husband. That's the only time that you're going to do that. But here, she exposed all of that in front of everybody. Right? You only do that with your spouse. And, and take note here, yung sabi ni Simon na, she's a sinner. Because, you know what? Simon thinks that she is a sinner. I know you also think that she is a sinner based on what she does. And guess what? Jesus also thinks the same. But there's a very big difference when Simon says she's a sinner versus when Jesus thinks that this woman is a sinner. There's a very big difference in terms of the motivation of telling that woman that you are a sinner. Because for Simon, when she talks about this woman is a sinner. She talks about, you know what? She's a sinner. We should stay away from her. We should not touch her. We should not be involved. We should not even be in the same room with this, with this woman because she's a sinner. You know what? This woman is a sinner. God doesn't want anything to do with her because she is broken beyond repair. That could be what Simon was thinking. She is broken beyond repair. But you know what? When Jesus thinks of this woman that she's a sinner, 
This is what Jesus sees. When Jesus sees broken, she actually sees beauty. That's what, she, that's what Jesus sees. There's a very big difference with how Simon sees this woman as a sinner versus Jesus looking at you and looking at this woman as a sinner. And the beauty that Jesus sees here in this situation is that despite her brokenness, right? She knows who she is. She knows what she does. But despite that, despite her past, despite what she does, despite who she is, despite her issues in life, despite her sinfulness, what did she, what did she do? She was very willing, right? Siguro grabe yung courage that she has to master, right? Grabe yung humility also that she should all, she should uh, that she has also in order for her to walk in front of everyone and admit, you know, that I am a sinner. And going back to that alabaster jar, for some of you who actually know the story, you might think na wow, grabe naman yung worship uh, that this woman did to this particular uh, to, to Jesus. Kasi we worship niya si Jesus with this very expensive uh, perfume, right? But you know what? That's not really what that alabaster jar signifies. It's not the, the worship. You know what? That alabaster jar is a sign of that woman's brokenness. That perfume that she's holding, she actually used that to lure men. Ginagamit niya yung sa trabaho niya. Because she's a prostitute, right? So she has to put all of that perfume in order for men to actually like her. So for her to actually lavishly ubusin niya, inoffer niya sa feet ni Jesus, what does that mean? That you know what, Jesus, I'm giving this up. This is a sign of my brokenness. This is a sign of my past and I'm giving it up. That's what that alabaster jar actually means. Can you imagine the smell of the room during that time? One jar of perfume. Diba, sobrang dami nung ano nung perfume niya. The smell of the room must have, must have, you know, talagang grabe yung amoy niya. Grabe yung incense siguro during that time. And for people, when they smell that, when they smell that, they actually, they, they would know, ah, a prostitute is in the room. That's what people would think. Because that's, that's her calling card, di ba? Of being a prostitute, that, that perfume. But for Jesus, that smell, that's the smell woman's brokenness that is offered under Jesus' feet. Grabe, no? Grabe yung, 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 yung idea na yun. You know, there are only two types of people in this world. The people who think, those who are in recovery and those that are in denial. Because the thing is, we might look at this woman's broken, but the thing is, we are all broken. We are the same person as this woman. But some of you are just denying it. Why? Because the Bible says actually very clear, there, surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Wala dong mabuti sa atin, right? If you think you're better than that particular woman, actually no, this, this, this verse right here says, no, <laughs> you're one and the same thing. But let me make it even clearer. Romans says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. There's no one righteous. There's a standard that God sets and no one is able to actually uh, to fulfill that standard. And if you do not believe me, let me convince you. If you think you are good enough to save yourself, that you are not a sinner, okay? Let, let, let us do a test. This is a test of how good are you as a person. Okay? So, you don't have to raise your hand, but you just have to react. Ganun, ganun, ganun ka sa akin, okay? Tingin-tingin na lang tayo. Okay? <laughs> Para hindi nakakaya. Oh, how good are you as a person, okay? First question, have you ever killed anyone? I hope wala dito sa room, ha? <laughs> okay, nakakatakot yun. Pag merong bilang, ay, ako po meron isa. Yeah. Isa lang naman. <laughs> okay, if this is the test of your goodness, all of us should go to heaven. Right? If you did not kill anyone, good for you, good for us. Okay? But you know, Jesus raises the bar. Jesus ra- Because for us, killing is this physical killing, right? But Jesus raises the bar. 
Take note of this verse. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. That means you are going to hell. But I say, here, if you are even angry with someone, you have done the same. You have done the same. If you call someone an idiot, if you, if, if, you're in the, if you are in danger of being brought before the court, and if you think ill of someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. Let me ask you again. Sino ulit dito? Ang may pinatay na, most likely lahat tayo, right? You get the point here? You get the point? All of us are killers. All of us are murderers. Oh, how about this one? Sabi ng iba, okay, okay, safe na ako dito sa next question. Have you committed adultery? Ay, safe ako dyan, kuya. Wala akong asawa eh. Right? Safe ako dyan. Hindi ko ginawa yan, for sure. Wala akong asawa eh. Take note of this verse. Jesus raises the bar. You have heard the commandment that says, you must not commit adultery. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Sino ulit nanonood ng porn dito? Ah, wag wag mag-ano. Wag mag-raise ng hand. Right? We're adulterers. Last question. How many times do you have to lie before you're called a liar? Ilang beses? Ha? Tatlo yung iba, sabi nila. Isa lang, di ba? When you lie once, what are you called? You're a liar. You're a liar. And, sabi dito, you have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. Sino ulit dito nag-promise at di niya sinunod? Sabi niya, ma'am, maaga na talaga ako bukas. Ma'am, promise, isasubmit ko yung, yung ano, yung ano mamaya. Right? And it says here, you must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Just say, I'm simple. Yes, I will. Or no, I won't. Take note, anything beyond that is from the evil one. Sino ulit liar dito? Man. And just to scare you some more, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the unbelieving, the detestable, as for murderers, but as for the sexually immoral people, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is second death. That means, guys, we are doomed. Right? So if you think highly of yourself as a good person, I'm a better person than this woman who is a prostitute. Actually, no. We are, we are actually one and the same. That's why I, I would like to ask you again, so how good are you again? Right? You see, where it does this places us, whether you go to church or you don't go to church, it actually places us in the same playing field. We are all sinners. It's just that some of you, you are humble enough to actually admit that. But some of you, there's an air of arrogance and pride na, no, I think I'm better than yung katabi ko. Ganyan. Right? Some of you are in denial. Some of you are actually admitting that you need recovery. That's the only difference here. So what happened next? Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, I don't want you to miss this. So Jesus turned to this woman who was crying, uh, washing her, uh, wiping her, his feet with all of that perfume. He turned to this woman, and that's what said in the verse. Natin, and he said to Simon. So he's talking to this woman. I, he's looking at this woman, but he is talking to Simon. You get the idea? Di ba yung para siyang nagpaparinig? Pero of course, hindi nagpaparinig si Jesus dito. Pero parang ganun yung idea. Di ba yung parang ganun? Di ba yung parang kunwari, gusto mo siyang pagalitan si Shai? O, oh, di ba? Di ba sabi ko sa'yo, huwag kang malilit? Pero siya talaga yung kausap mo. You get the idea? Parang ganun yung nangyayari dito eh. Di ba? So he turned to the woman and said to Simon. And I don't want you to miss that moment, no? That, that particular 
scenario right there because it's as if Jesus was saying to Simon, he was talking to Simon, but he would like to talk to the real Simon. The Simon who is the same as this woman who is a sinner. Ayoko nung Simon na nagpe-pretend na religious. Right? Ayoko nung yung may air of arrogance and pride. Hindi, okay lang ako. Mas mabuti ako kaysa sa ibang tao. Ayoko kong kausap yun. Yung isa, parang yung sinasabi ni Jesus, right? Gusto kong kausapin yung totoong Simon. Sorry, ikaw lang nandiyo sa harap eh. <laughs> gusto, kong, gusto kong kausapin yung totoong Simon. Yun yung, yun, that's, that's how I looked at that. No? Then he says, you know, he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. But he was talking to Simon, right? It's kind of like, you know what, Simon? When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head. But this woman, and Jesus was kind of like saying, I hope that this was what you did. Sana hindi ganun yung parang Simon na napaka-arrogant na you think you're good. No, I hope na Simon sana ito yung ginawa mo. Right? But she anointed me, my feet, with rare perfume. So what happened to this woman? This woman who humbly admitted that she is a sinner, right? I tell you, her sins are what? They are. I tell you, her sins and they are many. So Jesus is not saying, you know, you know what? Okay, lang yung makasin. No, even Jesus recognizes that this woman is a sinner. But again, diba sabi ko kanina, when Simon was telling that this woman is a sinner, it's very different when this when Jesus is the one telling this woman she's a sinner. It's very different. Even Jesus recognizes that this woman is a sinner. Jesus doesn't neglect the fact that this woman is a sinner. I tell you her sins and they are many, but they have been forgiven because she was very humble enough to admit that she is a sinner. They have been forgiven. She has shown much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Again, you know, Jesus was looking at this woman. He was actually talking to the real. He was talking to the real Simon, not this version of a Simon. And my question to you right now is, who would you rather be? Kayo, who would you who would you rather be, right? Because that's the invitation today. You can choose who would you like to be. Who would you rather be? You can actually be Simon, who thinks that he is good enough and righteous enough that he doesn't need God, that he actually doesn't need Jesus in his life, that he doesn't really need forgiveness because I can actually take care of myself. I'm okay naman eh. Or you can actually be this woman, right? This prostitute. That she has the, the humility, right? And the courage to actually show that she is broken before all of the people. She has to broadcast that she is a broken person that she is sinful, right? That she has a shameful past, but she humbles herself, right? And chooses to bring it at the feet of Jesus. You can choose, right? But when you choose, remember who gets the forgiveness. Right? Remember who gets the forgiveness. Who gets the love. Who gets the freedom, right? Who gets the peace. It's not the version of this Simon, right? It's supposed to be it's this woman. You see, to experience the love of Jesus, you must be the real you. Don't present a version of yourself before God because God knows you in and out. God knows everything about you, right? And to, to, to experience the love of Jesus, you must be the real you. And to be honest, right? It's not just Simon. All of us are like this prostitute woman. We are all but sinners. And the thing is, God is not going to have a relationship with the person you are pretending to be. Because the relationship is not going to be real, right? So I hope na wala kayong imaginary relationship with God, that you think you have a relationship with God, pero yung pala, the relationship that you have with God is this 
person that you're pretending to be, that you're presenting to God. But that's not what God wants. What God wants is your humility to present to Him all of your brokenness, all of your past. And as our last verse here, Jesus said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. See, the first step of knowing, of, of getting healed from something is first admitting that you are sick. Right? You will never be treated by someone unless you are so proud enough to tell yourself that you're actually okay, but you're actually very sick. And when God calls us to be, when God tells us that we are sinners, it doesn't, it's not like how Simon calls this woman as a sinner because this Simon judges this woman as a sinner. I don't like anything to do with you. But when God tells you that you're a sinner, that's an invitation. Right? Simon tells, you are a sinner, get away from me. But God tells you, you know what? You're a sinner. Come here. That, that's what this verse is all about. Jesus did not come here for the righteous. The Simon righteous. No, he did, he did not come for that. But he actually came for you. He came for me. For all of us. Because we are all sick. We are all sinners. And you see, that's the invitation that we have right now. The invitation is to actually go to Jesus with all of your brokenness, with all of your shameful past. It doesn't matter. I really like, no, I'm going to ask our worship team to come here as we uh, do our response song. I really like th that song, you know. Come as you are. There's no need for what? Any hiding, right? There's no need for any hiding. In the Father's arms, you are met with open arms. He gives grace without condition. Come just as you are. You know what? The moment that you lose your life for Jesus is the moment that you will have it. So that's the invitation for this afternoon. So how about we bow down our heads? If you're here this afternoon and if you're someone who you don't really have to, you know, you, you might have religion you think you are basically good, but you don't really have Jesus in your life. You know what? That's the invitation for this afternoon. I don't know if there's any other chance that you will have. Because this might only be the, the, the only chance that, that God is giving you to actually invite Jesus into your life. I hope that you will not be like Simon. You know, there's this shame and guilt, there's this pride and arrogance in your heart that you think you're basically good enough for yourself. But I hope you will be like this woman, right? She was humble enough and courageous enough to actually go at Jesus' feet. Because that's the invitation, to come just as you are. So as your heads are bowed down, if you're that particular person who doesn't have Jesus in your life that you know, I can lead you with a prayer. Or maybe you have been attending Elevate and you are masking your relationship with Jesus and with God, with religious activities. You think you have a relationship with God, but actually, you know, deep in your heart you don't. Maybe this is the time, you know, that you can have a real relationship with God. Let me lead you with that prayer. You can repeat after me. You can say it out loud. You can say it in your head. It doesn't matter for as long as you say it from your heart. Say a prayer like this. Lord, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. This time, God, I realize that I'm not good enough. There is nothing in me that I can save myself. I am broken. I have a past. I am ashamed of the things that I have done. But thank you, Jesus, because I can come just as I am. 
So Lord, I invite you into my heart. Lord, change me from the inside out. Jesus, help me to live a life that you want me. To live a better life, Lord. And so Lord, at this point, Jesus, will you please be the one to direct my life. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name. So Lord, we thank you, Father, for this afternoon. Thank you, God, for all of the students who are here who have heard the message. This is your message, Lord. This is not from me, but this is from you. And so I pray, Father, that this message, Lord, will really have arms and they will have feet that they will do something about it. It's not just an inspiration once again, Lord, but it will be a transformation in the lives of everyone who have heard the message. Lord. So Lord, we thank you, Father, for this time. And even as we go to our breakouts, as we go through our small groups, Lord, we pray that we will have a blessed time with you, Father. So we thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we all stand up as we sing our response?